Here in Westland, we're very proud of our successful Mission Green initiative, and we do all that we can for the environment. Recently, the economics of recycling has changed for us and will soon affect many cities across the region, the state, and the country. We're all forced to find new solutions. On the show today is Westland City Council President Jim Godbout, who's going to talk about what we're doing with our own recycling program. Then Canton Township Supervisor Pat Williams will share how they're tackling the latest changes in the market. And we'll finish up by visiting with Michael Garfield from the Ecology Center. It's an organization that has been working on innovative solutions for a healthy planet since 1970. Taking a look at regional and global issues from a local perspective, you're watching In the W. volunteering with local charities to participating in the Rouge Rescue cleanups, my next guest was actively engaged in the community affairs long before running for elected office. He's been a resident of Westland for more than 40 years and is currently the president of the Westland City Council. Welcome to In the W, Jim Godbout. Thanks, Mayor. Council President, we appreciate you, you coming by today. And, uh, you know, today we're talking about recycling. Obviously, the economics of uh, recycling have changed um, before we dive into that, I want to recognize your efforts because, you know, the current program has, has been successful for a long time. But, Jim, you were actually part of what I would call the original recyclers back uh, that, that tried for several years to, uh, to establish a recycling program. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, that. Actually, yes. So, you know, there was a committee formed back, uh, I believe, when Bob Thomas was the mayor. And uh, we started uh, looking at ways to try and bring recycling into the city. And we started off with the small uh, bins that were placed and, and then they were doing a sort at the street at that point in time uh, to separate the recycled materials. And it evolved over time to where we had the cart system and have the cart system currently in the city. Yeah, I think the originally it was a subscription program. We had to pay X amount to, uh, to, to participate and then as the market changed and, um, you know, markets change on commodities, all of a sudden recycling was valuable and it, it kind of spawned single stream recycling. And so the city kind of never looked back. I mean, we, we delivered those 25,000 blue containers and, and it seemed like right from the very beginning, Jim, that, uh, you know, I know we had Recycle Bank in the beginning, but we had close to 80% participation in year one. And here we are, you know, a, a decade later, and we're still right around that 80% participation. So the city really took to it. Uh, they did. I mean, our residents have been great about it. Uh, they they uh, put the stuff in the, in the proper bins for the most part. Uh, but ag again, that commodity market has changed. And as, uh, you know, as the market changes, um, you know, we've got to try and adapt and figure out ways that we're going to uh, continue to offer some kind of a recycling program for our residents. We used to get paid money for for the recycling when we first started with the carts. That made all of us look pretty smart when uh, we recycled, and we were getting forty dollars a ton at the time for recyclables, as opposed to paying at the time was probably twenty five dollars a ton to uh, landfill it. So it made us all look pretty smart. Right, and we used to, and we actually were recognized at the state level for having the the best recycling program in Michigan at one point in time. So, uh, and we still have a great recycling program. When I uh, talk up at the MML about the fact that we have, cl you know, close to 80% of our residents recycling. There's a lot of disbelief because other communities don't get near that level of participation from their residents. You know, so from the very beginning, we've been recycling on average now about about 5,000 tons of, uh, of recyclables a year. So we're diverting about 20% of our trash from the landfill to the, recycle, to the recycling center. And and kind of fast forward to where we're at today, and the reason we're having this discussion is that the economy of recycling has changed. Uh, you know, with single stream recycling, you know, a lot of the recycling, uh, probably the majority of it, not only in Westland, but the state of Michigan, but across the country and around the world, was collected, 
and containerized and shipped to China. And as, it, as China's growing uh, economy took off, you know, they were using recyclables and they were able to, uh, you know, it was easier for them to turn the recyclables into new material than creating their own. Um, but that's changed now. Now as their economy slowed down, you know, they, they produce just as many recyclables in China as they, we do in the United States. So they've gotten better at utilizing their own materials for recycling. And at the same time, we kind of got caught up into that U.S.-China tariff war and import exports. And uh, so China's really put the, the slowdown on input and imports, uh, these tariffs have made it kind of where it's not uh, profitable to ship the materials. So it's really created a backlog in the United States in the recycling centers. And Westlands had a relationship with the recycling center at New Boston, you know, for 10 years. And, you know, as the markets changed and we've been working on a month to month uh, contract with them for a couple of years because the market has been so unstable. We received notification that our price of $18 a ton to recycle was going to go to $80 a ton in February. And that's kind of what's, you know, caused this effect in Westland. So you want to talk a little bit about what your reaction was when you when you saw that notification, Jim? Well, when, when they told us it was going to $80 a ton, it was clear they didn't want the, the material anymore. And part of that is they don't have anywhere to go with it. Uh, because of the way that the recycled material was handled before and being shipped over to China, there aren't the f facilities to process the recycled material to turn it back into raw material to be, in, be reused here in the U.S. There are some, but nowhere near what the demand across the country is for, uh, for the, the material. So that uh, you know, un until the U.S. develops more processing facilities to, to take the plastics and to break it back down or to, to take, you know, metals and paper, we have some. And there, there's still a, a bigger market for metals and paper and cardboard uh, in the U.S. because there are some processing facilities that handle that material. But uh, the plastics and, and the glass, for example, uh, there really is very minimal market for that here in the U.S. that can be reprocessed and reused here in the U.S. So, so Jim, as, as, as we found out that, that we've been, we've been we, you've talked about it, we had a study session, uh, the National League of Cities has kind of taken the lead on uh, communications to cities uh, with a white paper that we have available on the city's website. We started talking to council, we need to be aware that this was going to affect us. When the letter came in, we basically had 30 days to make a decision. Um, we were currently paying $18 a ton for our recyclables. With it going to $80 a ton, we're looking at our volume, our annual volume of 5,000 tons, that was we were looking at you know close to another $400,000 to handle that same volume of recyclables. And and uh, to remind our viewers is that all the different things that we do in Westland, you know, as far as sanitation. We have a dedicated millage, and that millage um, comes down a little bit every year based on Headley. But under that millage, we're doing all of our trash pickup, recycling, operating the recycling center. Um, you know, we brought back bulk pickup, which was which was expensive, but we think I, I think it was the right decision. I think you do too. Right. It was expensive, and it really taxed our millage. So when this kick came in on recycling, uh, it really put us in a position that the millage didn't have the ability to pay for it, so we were gonna to have to get into the general fund, so. Well, and, and that becomes problematic as well, as we know with the water fund, when, you know, those enterprise funds, if we go into general fund dollars to subsidize those uh, specialty funds, we, we're at the risk of dropping our bond rating, and uh, which we can't afford to do. So, council's gonna have some tough decisions coming up this budget year, to uh, stay within our sanitation budget within the uh, millage that's currently allotted. So we made the decision, of, we, we had a study session. Uh, you and I actually was part of a team that went out to view, um, as we were looking at what to do with our recyclables, one of the options that was presented was uh, potentially taking our recyclables to the 
Detroit Waste to Energy plant. And you and I were part of a small team that went out to view the plant. And um, I think at that time we were comfortable that they seemed to be extremely well run. And mm -hmm. we timed the trucks coming in and out and uh, the, the mileage was about the same as the recycling center. So there weren't gonna be any additional cost. Um, at that point I declared an emergency and we started taking materials to the waste energy plant at a price of $25 a ton. Uh, we had a study session with city council and uh, we explained that. Uh, team council was, was pretty much understanding of that. Um, when we brought a contract to the city council, $25 a ton to go to waste energy, we also negotiated, and I appreciate Paul Ruthenberg uh, for twisting their arm a little bit. He got us a caveat that if we could guarantee 5,000 tons annually, that once we hit over 4,000 tons, they would rebate us back to 2250. So, right. we were paying 18 at 2250. You know, we, we felt we could still keep it within the the sanitation millage, and we had the ability to at any time, if the recycling center uh, changed their operations, we could we could uh, divert it back there. And we went to city council, and we ran into some, uh, you know. Uh, opposition from some people in the audience, some Detroiters, right. and at the Ecology Center, who's actually gonna be on our show today, so we're gonna ask him about that. So the decision was made to uh, not take the waste to the, or the recyclables to the waste energy plant, but instead landfill them. So you wanna give your thoughts on that? Sure, I was, I, neither option is good, right? Going to the waste energy facility or landfilling is not the right thing to do but we're faced with those choices as of right now. Um, and there's pros and cons to both. Uh, taking the material to the waste energy facility, at least it would have provided some useful uh, benefit to the people that utilize the energy that's produced out of that facility. It heats uh, over 140 buildings in the city of Detroit and provides, I, th I think it's somewhere around 85 megawatts of power which is enough to power 20 to 40,000 homes. So at least it would have provided some useful purpose. Yes, there is the, the problem with uh, the environment from a, what goes up in the smokestack uh, versus, but at a landfill, you have to look at what's gonna be the future of the potential groundwater contamination, as well as the fact that a landfill uh, emits methane, which is extremely harmful to the ozone layer. So, you know, there's, there's arguments both ways, but I can tell yeah. you at this, because I sit on the uh, Energy and Environmental Commission uh, with the MML, and there are more pieces of legislation dealing with problems with groundwater than there is with air, air quality issues. Right now, I think the only act that's currently being looked at in uh, either the House or the Senate in regards to air pollution is where do they go with the fine money and how the fine money gets allocated, not about what's coming out of the smokestack. And I grew up in the area down by the incinerator. And yeah. the air quality down there is far better than what it was 40 or 50 years ago. There are a lot of manufacturing that's left that area, which helped. And, and the biggest polluter in that area is actually Marathon and, and what they're doing. And they've actually are looking for a waiver so that they don't have to comply with a lot of the, the current EPA standards. So coming out of that study session, uh, I put together a letter because I thought th this is something that affects every household in Westland. And there's 25,000 houses that, that had the curbside recycling. So we put together a letter and we kind of basically explained to the residents what we were doing and why. Um, I can tell you that I, I, I thought it was important because I, I think this is an issue that we need to be very transparent on. And I know that some other cities are struggling with, do they come up with a solution before they educate their, their public or do they educate the public without a solution? And, and I think that all of us in, in government and management, you hate to, say we got a problem without a solution, but this is, this is a global thing. It's affecting everybody. We're gonna to continue to have dialogue on this because I think that 
myself and yourself and everybody on the city council wants to uh, do everything we can to save our recycling program. Right. So there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, we have a copy of that letter on the city's website. Uh, we also have a lot of frequently asked questions. We did put, if you have any questions, call City Hall. And, and Jim, I could tell you that overwhelmingly, the calls that were coming in were supportive. You guys got to, we want to continue recycling. Um, the next thing was, when we talked about $18 to 80 and 25 we, we confused people. A lot of people thought that we were asking them to write a check. That So if I pay 80 we can still do it. We just need to explain again is that all the sanitation, all the recycling, all the trash pickup is all covered under your, your tax bill under the sanitation millage. Right. So it, we're not, no one's got to write a check or anything. We just wanted residents to realize that there, there was an issue there. So I think we'll have to continue to educate people moving, as, moving forward. Um, I think the budget process is going to be a, a great time for us to talk about other potential solutions. I know that Paul Ruthenberg has been meeting with some other businesses in the area that, that might be able to, uh, to help us out as well. So, Yeah, it, it will be, uh, you know, a big issue during the during the budget time uh, but the the two bin system it, you know it is important to, because uh, recycling becomes a habit sure. right? and so the continuation and the use of the two bin system as long as we can we can handle it uh, you know is important because it keeps everyone doing the same operating the same way at this point in time so that when we do come up with a solution there isn't a big transition to go back to a system. Uh, the system's already in place. Uh, we just need to figure out what's going to be the best way moving forward to utilize it. You know, one thing that is encouraging in uh, uh, Midwest Sanitation, which is our trash haulers, Paul Ruthenberg's company, he did report that since the letter's gone out and, we, and we've kind of shared this information with the public is that the recycling containers, are, people are still putting them out to the curb. They did a little test and they popped the lids to check and, and people are still recycling the right way. So I think that our residents are, are, are working with us and um, I think that they're gonna stick with it as we find a solution. And while we know that it's not optimum to have two different trucks come and pick up the recycling and the trash separately and take them to the same place, that's not the best economic way to do it. But we do wanna keep it separated because like Jim said, we, recycling's a habit. <laughs> People are used to having their recycling picked up on certain days. We don't want to change any of that because the market could change very quickly. Just the tariffs, if, if, if those were to change, uh, it, it, could, it could affect it very quickly. So we're going to ask people to keep recycling, keep using that blue container. We're going to keep working on trying to find uh, a great place to take the recyclables that, that, that don't cost the city of Westland too much money because... I think we're proud of the how far we've came as an environmentally friendly city, and we don't want to go back on that. Absolutely, and uh, you know these are issues that the Michigan Recycling Coalition is looking at. Uh, there is uh, an education process that will need to take place once we, uh, you know, get whatever system is going to be put into place and wherever it's going to go. Uh, one of the biggest problems was that across the state and across the nation is. For example, plastic bags, uh, even though they say they're recyclable, yeah. uh, on a single sort facility, for example, it's very problematic for them because it gets caught up in their, their equipment and uh, shuts down their lines as they try and go through that. And that's, that's across the board and across the country that that, that occurs. So, uh, so there is an education process that will have to take place again as we move back into it. But until we know just exactly the commodities and how we're going to handle the program, uh, you know, we're just kind of in a, in a hold mode until that happens. All right, Jim. Well, we appreciate you working with this. I appreciate your leadership on recycling for, uh, for several years. Jim, you've been on city council now for close to 20 years. You've been proudly serving us as our council president now for over 12 years, which I sat in that chair. It is an incredibly tough job. You make it look easy. And uh, I know that um, it, it, it doesn't get any more easy as we tackle big issues like this because, uh, you know, it, it's easy to uh, sometimes to attack people that are trying to solve problems, but you, you do it very well. And we appreciate how much of your own personal time you put into the city.
Well, thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks, Jim. And when I come back from break, Kent Township Supervisor Pat Williams is going to be here to talk more about local recycling. We'll be right back. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi babe, how was school today? Hi Dad, it was great. Okay honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. In 2016, he was elected to the office of Canton Township Supervisor after serving two terms as a township trustee. Like many other local government leaders, he's dealing with the changing recycling market. Welcome to In the W, Canton Township Supervisor Pat Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for having me. Well, Pat, we appreciate uh, you coming into In the W today. Um, we're, today we're talking about the changing e e economics of recycling. Mm -hmm. I know that Canton is, is, is facing this issue as well, and, and I appreciate your leadership as the Conference of Western Wayne. Uh, you're leading a, a, actually a task force to try to come up with some regional solutions. So, Absolutely, yes. So welcome then to W, and uh, so you're having uh, issues with recycling, or you, why don't you talk a little bit about how recycling is affecting Canton Township? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, several weeks ago, our um, current waste hauler, GFL, uh, approached us. Uh, we had a meeting. And they shared with us what's happening with the, the Chinese purchasing market of recyclables from North America, which includes our entire region here. Uh, and we discovered that uh, China, uh, through their new SWORD program, is not buying uh, the amount of recycling that they used to from North America. And th that being said, uh, there's increased cost now to sort out just what is sellable today and eliminate what is not being sold. And with that, there's additional cost, incremental cost for hauling. And we now have materials that we all thought were being recycled that are going into our landfills. So Pat, one of the things that, that we're finding is that you know, the, the economics of recycling are changing globally. They're affecting different cities, different communities, different states, a little bit different, depending on how locally you handle this. And in the city of Westland, we, have two separate containers, one for trash, one for recycling. Uh, in Westland, we have our own recycling, we have our own trucks. Uh, we hire a company to do the, the labor for us and mm -hmm. they take the, the solid waste, the garbage to Woodland Meadows and, and Van Buren Township and our recyclables up until just recently went to uh, a recycling uh, facility. We call it a MRF, mm -hmm. which was in New Boston. Right. Now that's different than the way that you guys yes, handle. absolutely. Can you explain how you yeah. guys handle trash? Our structure in Canton is, uh, the contractor is GFL. Uh, we were a uh, slow to come to the large bin automatic trick, uh, truck lift for the recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were, we followed what Westland had done and just implemented that in the last year and a half, two years ago. And our residents were asked to pay us a slight increase uh, to pay for the automated equipment in the larger bins. Uh, so that just happened a year and a half ago in Canton. Now with uh, the markets changing, um, we had uh, our recycled materials headed to a Romulus MRF mm -hmm. recycling sorting facility. And then uh, the 
The other waste products are going to the landfill that's located in Canton Township uh, that's owned by Republic. So we okay. have the MRF for the recycling and the landfill in Canton Township, uh, which gives us a slight advantage in terms of we don't pay tipping fees because the landfill is in our community. So one of the issues that, that if I understand right, that Canton's facing is that if your recyclables don't go to a recycling or a MRF, then they have to go to your landfill, which affects the life the cycle, um, absolutely. The positive. life cycle of your landfill? Yes, sir. So in addition to asking for basically doubling up our recycling rates uh, from GFL to the residents, um, the increased flows of materials now hitting the landfills is, is going to reduce potentially by three to four years the life of the landfill. Right now we're projecting out potentially another 17 year life that, but that could be reduced significantly if we don't come up with other solutions to, to handle the recycled products. All right, so you can see, uh, while well, both Westland and Canton handle our recycling and trash a little bit different, it has major impacts both short-term and long-term in our communities. So, Pat, can you talk a little bit about the task force that you're chairing and kind of yep. what, what, what you're trying to do there and maybe some of the work that's been done already? Yeah, it became very clear through our conference of Western <coughs> Wayne meetings where you and I talk and some of the other mayors and supervisors that uh, the issues that we're dealing with in, with the recycling changes is, is not a local issue. It's, it's not just one community, it's all of our communities. Um, so at that time I had asked uh, uh, Jordan, who runs Canton, uh, Conference of Western Wayne, if we could potentially put together a group of, of uh, leaders from Conference of Western Wayne to discuss and develop strategies, uh, short term and long term, to deal with the changes in the recycling markets. So that committee now, it, it's chaired by yourself, and right. there's it's, also representation from Westland, myself, and the mayor of Dearborn as well. Right, and recently added <coughs> on was uh, Supervisor Nix out of uh, Northfield Township. So you have the right. two townships <coughs> and the two cities. Uh, yourself, you were the, actually the first new committee member, then Jack O'Reilly joined uh, from Dearborn and uh, Northfield Township coming in late. But it's a, it's a good group of people who have a lot of diverse experience in, in running their municipalities. Well, we had a, a meeting actually just this week and, and you had some, uh, some outside consultants from uh, the recycling and trash world that have been kind of uh, offering us some advice. and. I know that Jordan is still continuing to uh, bring in information on what all the other communities are doing and looking at their volumes. And um, do you think that working together will be able to come up with uh, a one size fits all, or you think at least some potential options that, that we currently don't have? Well, there's, there's very simple ideas that get shared and some very complex um, solutions that are longer term. <coughs> uh, you know, one example is Canton Township based on Westland's lead, what you had done in terms of communicating with the residents to make them even aware of what's happening with the recycling markets. Uh, we're, we're gonna follow what Westland has done there. Um, and that's gonna be developed and shared with the rest of the conference of Western Wayne. Um, so we can start educating the residents first on what's happening. Then secondly, where there is value add and not value add in what's going into the bins. Uh, so we can narrow down and, and hopefully improve or relieve the pressure for increasing rates uh, from the waste haulers. And then uh, long-term solutions uh, that we've started to kick around is a potential for a regional MRF, perhaps through Wayne County, uh, for all Western Wayne County to take advantage of. Um, so we can own uh, the future in terms, own our own futures as a region in terms of uh, education, communication, and cost structure of the recycling processes. Well, as you can see, I mean, it's a pretty uh, complex issue. Uh, so I appreciate uh, the, the, you, you bringing up the way that we communicated and, and we talked about it in our first segment was we did a letter and we have 25,000 residents that, that are affected. Um, but besides the letter, we're also using pretty much every other means of communication we can. And, We've got newsletters and we've done PSAs on our cable station and um, just about every time that I'm talking in public with, the, with, with our residents now, we're, we're touching on this. And mm -hmm. you guys, um, besides your own cable department, um, I've always been impressed with the newsletter that you put out. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you'll, you'll be reaching yeah. out to your residents yeah. in a lot of different yeah. ways too. Our April 
2019 focus newsletter lead article is going to be a letter from myself to the residents uh, sharing with them what is happening with the recycling market. So it's coming very soon. Well, Pat, I, I appreciate you being the chair of this because, you know, I, I appreciate the way that you run Canton Township. You have a business mind and you've really kind of dove in. You, you kind of scratched on the surface of it here, but you've really taken a look at what we're putting in those containers mm -hmm. because if it's market driven, we're probably going to have to re-educate our public as we come out of this okay. on, on what's in there. So what are some of the things that you found that are, that are currently that we're putting in the containers that there's basically no market for? Uh, the plastics market, the, um, as I'm learning and gathering more information, uh, the, the paper, very clean uh, cardboard, have fairly strong markets. Uh, glass is, has virtually no market today. And that tends to be cyclical, and it may change again, but today there's very little market. And then there's the plastics identified as one and two that have, have high value. And then there's other numbered pract, uh, plax, plastic levels that don't have much value that I know we're all putting into our recycle bins. Yeah, and some of the experts have told us in some communities, up to 26%, I think we heard yesterday, is what they call residual or but we also heard what they call it wishful recycling right wishful recycling <laughs> i'm one of, of those people <laughs> a I lot am. of people think boy this should be something they should be able to recycle so right. they throw it in there too so so i think that obviously as as the markets change we're going to have to do a lot of time a lot of efforts educating our residents mm -hmm. on what they can put in the containers mm -hmm. so looks like we got our work cut out for us absolutely yes sir well this issue is not going away we're going to continue to talk about it so hopefully uh maybe as Canton Township moves a little bit further down the road, and as the task force starts to come up with some, you know, real defined uh, solutions, we can have you back to uh, update our folks here on In the W. I'd be more than happy to come back, sir. All right, Pat, we'll keep up the good work. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> After a short break, we're going to be joined by Michael Garfield from the Ecology Center to continue our discussion here on recycling. We'll be right back. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? Our final guest here today has served as the director of the Ecology Center since 1993. During that time, he's led grassroots advocacy campaigns to raise over $100 million in public funds for land preservation. He's testified before federal and state legislative committees, and he's served on numerous public advisory boards. Welcome to In the W, Mike Garfield. Thanks, Bill. Great to be here. Well, we appreciate uh, you coming in today, and uh, we're, we're tackling an issue that uh, is near and dear to us in the city of Westland, and I know it's near and dear to the Ecology Center too. So, Mike, you've been the director of the Ecology Center. Uh, you've been there since uh, the early 90s. Um, I think w I remember meeting you back when we were first kicking off our recycling program here in the city of Westland. So we appreciate what the Ecology Center does. And maybe for our viewers, why don't you just give them a little bit of a snapshot on what exactly the Ecology Center is and what they do. Well, happy to do that. Uh, and, and like I said, it's great to be here with you. Uh, the, the Ecology Center is a 50-year-old nonprofit organization that works for innovative solutions for healthy people and a healthy planet. We're based in Ann Arbor and Detroit. We started the first recycling program in the state of Michigan way back in 1970. Really? And we still manage recycling operations in, in Washtenaw County, um, most, most of the operations in the county. The, um, 
Uh, the Ecology Center also works on um, climate issues, climate change issues, toxic chemical issues, um, uh, food system issues, a whole range of environmental issues. And our point of view is that environmental issues are community issues and they're public health issues. And we think that um, environmental solutions have to work for everybody and they have to really be focused on people's lives and in their communities. So the issues that we're going through right now in terms of the disruption in the recycling industry, that's really close to my heart <laughs> and ones we hope, we, we hope Michigan can, can fix. And maybe Westland can be a leader in that. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. We appreciate uh, all the work the Ecology Center does. You're very well respected and uh, we appreciate uh, the advice you give in our city and plus other communities uh, over the years. So. Recycling. So we've talked about the economics of recycling have changed and uh, you know it's not a local issue, it's not a state of Michigan issue, it's a global issue. So we've kind of talked in our previous um, episodes kind of about the changing in uh, you know the, the China's role in the changing of economics uh, with recycling. We talked a little bit about the tariffs but at the end of the day it really comes down to uh, trying to take the, the, these products for recycling and, and match them up with end users. So kind of where the Ecology Center is sitting, you know, the, can you help us out? Can you point us in the right direction? I mean, is there light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I, I, th I think there's plenty of light when we look at this in the right way. And, and, and you know, as well as anyone, given your background in a recycling industry, that this is a business or, or, a, or, or, or a, a, a body of work that can be done affordably and can be done profitably. And there are plenty of businesses in the recycling industry that, that, may, that earn money. Um, the question is how do, you, how do you get value to the businesses that can do that, that can add value to materials and actually make a living doing that? And how do you share um, that value with local communities? I think the way, I, th I think the way the system has evolved over time has left local communities um, with the raw end of the deal for the most part. I want to explain um, what you mean by that. Well, I look at, I, I look at recycling markets like, uh, 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 people, people, uh, people talk these days about um, the crash in the recycling markets and the problems that the new Chinese regulations have created have created for recycling and it is a problem for local communities that have their service providers telling them they, they need to raise their prices dramatically. Um, well, <laughs> recycling prices, the, what gets paid to the companies that run those material recovery facilities, those go up and down all the time. The material prices go up and down just like the stock market. They go up and down like, on, like the commodities market because they are commodities and they're traded on global commo commodities markets. Um, the company, the MRF companies, they were making money back in the days when markets were good. Now markets are bad and they'd rather not, they'd rather not bear the cost. So they're going back to communities and saying, you've got, you've got to pay up. I think there should be some equitable cost sharing here. And so when times are good, when times are good, local communities should share a little bit in the good times. And when they're bad, maybe sharing a little bit of the risk too. But that's not the way the system works right now. I think the problem that we have in, the problem that we have in Michigan is that we don't have an economic or a public policy climate that really supports recycling at the community level. Um, there aren't, uh, landfill prices are very low. There aren't policies on the books um, from Lansing that promote recycling. With, without that, it, it's hard. If, if you're mayor of, of, of a community, you don't have a whole lot of options. And in the short term, I don't, I, don't see, I don't see terrific solutions for Westland or Canton Township, for Washtenaw County, for Detroit, for anyone who might be interested in, in this sort of thing. Um, but longer term, I, I think there are some, some ways out. And they're, gonna, they're, they're, they're going to have to be based on real public sector initiative. I think, cities, I think cities and counties really have to lead the way on this, on this issue. So when we talk about the, the commodities, it's a volume-based business. You know, and when you put us collectively together in, in Wayne County or Oakland County, or, I mean, we, we, we have volume. Um, so as long as there's a market for the, the volume, 
And, and what you're saying is that there is. We just have to make sure that that we're in a position that we can ride the waves of the, you know, the, the markets because it's a I mean, it's a global economy if we like it or not. And the, the, over the last decade, most of the recyclables have been going to China. But if if we've learned anything from that is that we need to build our infrastructure here, um, possibly with the new governor that. Um, that's going to kind of inherit a state that's, that's all of our communities is running into this recycling thing. Maybe we can start to see something at the state level, which uh, would maybe uh, take the leadership on this. You know, through the MEDC, I know that the governor is talking about maybe changing the way that that those dollars are flowing and maybe entrepreneurism based around recycling infrastructure or communities that are doing these regional MRFs, maybe. The, that's an avenue too. So, um, you seem to. Uh, to I, I, we've talked off camera about MRFs, and can you tell our viewers what MRF stands for, just so they know what we're talking <laughs> it's, about? Yeah, it's, it stands for. Um, it, it, it's. It sounds like something your kids might <laughs> might watch on television, <laughs> doesn't it? But it's. Uh, it, it stands for Material Recovery Facility. So okay. it's the place that our recyclables go after the trucks pick them up and that's where they get sorted to be sent to a paper mill or to a plastics reprocessor or to some other market. Okay. The MRF that the city of West End uses uh, was loca is located in New Boston. Um, so cities like West End, Canton Township, you know, they're, they're, they're having to make some tough decisions and as a mayor I can tell you that with my background in, in automotive recycling, recycling to me is in my blood, Getting our recycling program off and running meant a lot to me, and, and now to see that those materials are going to a landfill, you know, it just it, it, it breaks my heart. But it also gives me the passion that I've got to find a solution for this. So you'd mentioned us that that MRFs are like a regional MRF uh, is the way to go. There's a very established one in Oakland County. They, our viewers have heard us talk about it before. It's called Sacra. There's another MRF that's uh, in being established in Washtenaw County. Do you think that it's possible to create a MRF in Wayne County, or do you think that Washtenaw and Wayne County could merge? Or I mean, what's, what's the tipping point on volume to make one of these things work in, in today's environment? Well, I, I think, I, I think the, the core assumption that you're making is right, that the solution to this problem is gonna happen through public sector initiative. You look around the state of Michigan, there are very few privately owned MRFs. Most of the, most of the MRFs in Michigan are owned by uh, cities or counties or intergovernmental um, collections of cities. So there are actually two in Oakland County. There used to be one in Washtenaw County that was owned by the city of Ann Arbor. Um, they're now looking at creating a new uh, countywide or, or intergovernmental um, operation there. There are MRFs in Genesee County and Saginaw County and Kent County and other, a lot of other parts of the state. But they're almost all public sector ones. For Wayne County, Wayne County definitely has enough recyclables to justify um, the, the capitalization of a MRF. And I think it would make a lot of sense for the Western Wayne communities to come together. It might make for some sense for them to work with uh, Eastern Washtenaw County. Uh, those kind of details could be worked out. Um, but there's more than enough material and more than enough population to justify an investment in a MRF here. When you say that there's not privately owned MRFs, the businessman in me makes me think that that's because it's not profitable. By, by having the public sector there, are, are, are they, they subsidized? Or are they able to share the, the risk? Or what, what's, how can we not see the private sector there, but, but all the ones that are successful, they're public? There are plenty of public, there are pr plenty of privately owned MRFs in other states okay. where they have good, supportive, pro recycling public policy, okay. and where they have higher landfill prices. We've got very low landfill prices which is great for getting rid of your trash, gotcha. but lousy for recycling. Gotcha. Low landfill prices, bad public policy, virtually no commercial market. So that means the public sector has to make the investments. And if they do it in a smart way, strategically, they can do it affordably. Um, even in the good times, <laughs> they can do better, th better than that. And, okay. and bring, a little, bring a little bit of money back into the community and pay less than they pay for landfills. But you need to, tie, you need to get through the bad times too. Gotcha. So we talked a little bit about 
the recyclables that are part of single stream recycling and it looks like a lot of the things that that our residents are used to recycling at the curb currently don't have any value do you, do you see the 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 future of recycling do you see that mix at the curb changing as a you know is it just a one-time change or you think it's always going to be evolving depending on the markets I don't think they're, I don't think that's entirely true. Um, it, it, all materials that get recycled, except for some of the number three through seven plastics, I mean, I don't know if you collect those in Westland, but all the materials otherwise have value. Um, the value might be low right now. Um, and there, there are problems with marketing glass, but even glass has value when it's clean. And that's the distinction that's important to make. Okay. These materials, when they're prepared well, when MRFs produce high quality recyclables, they can sell them and there are good markets for all those materials. But when the materials get, um, don't get sorted well, when the paper is mixed in with a lot of plastic, uh, the material loses a lot of value and really that's what led the Chinese um, scrap mills and pr reprocessors to say, we don't want your, we, we, we don't want your bad recyclables. <laughs> we, gotcha. we want clean paper products. Gotcha. So I think all those materials have value. The approach to the MRF, the approach to sorting, has to be one that's really smart. And that means you have to have education, you have to have good quality control at your facility, you need to run a really good operation. You gotta think of the whole system of collection and processing as you would think of your business. Can you educate us why like a one or two, number one or two plastic is more recyclable than a six or seven? Um, they, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the, um, the plastic resin. It has to do with the, it, it, it has to do with the, um, uh, j just the maturity of the market gotcha. and, and, the, and how extensively it's used in, um, how extensively it's used in packaging. Okay. So as we wrap up our show here today, I, I kind of want to leave you with one thing is at the local level, it, it appears, that at least for the short term, we, we only have a few limited options and none of them appear to be very good. It's either A, take our recyclables to the landfill with our trash, uh, B, um, take them to an incinerator or a waste energy plant. And um, well, that's been one of the local things. As I talk with mayors across the country, that, that's one of the options they're looking at. And uh, you know, other than that, are there any other options that we really should be looking at short term as we as we try to find a long term solution? Well, I've heard you've been exploring. You, you've been exploring other um, recycling processing operations, and I think that's the that, that that's the ultimate best approach. I think you are faced with bad solutions right now, and as much as I hate to say it, I think from an environmental point of view. I would prefer to see you landfill the recyclables than have them get incinerated. And, and that's a hard thing for me to, for me to say. Sure. Um, if, you're able to, if you're able to afford the higher prices that you seem to be faced with, um, that's good. But I, that, that, that obviously would be the best solution, but I know money doesn't grow on trees. So I, I, think, I, I think the other thing to think about in the short term is about the kind of relationships that you have with service providers, whether it's a hauler or a, a recycling processor. But, you know, like I said, some of those companies were making money when markets were good. And I think there's got to be some way that you can share in the good times as well as the bad times now. And it's that kind of long term thinking that's. I know it's hard, it's hard to do when you're faced with a, a, an annual budget and a millage that might have only so much, so much um, space in it, but that's, that's the kind of approach that I think local communities need to take. You know, what gets tough is like in the, in the city of Westland, you know, one of our core principles is we want to be a sustainable city and curbside recycling has been a big part of that, but we've, we've changed out LED lights in, in every street. and. And we, we've, we've continued to look for new ways that the city of Westland can lower our carbon footprint and be environmentally friendly. At the same time, we're very limited on, on budget that we have to do these things. So while we look at other options, obviously they're all gonna be more than, than landfilling. So the city's gonna have to make some pretty tough decisions um, on what our priorities are, because if we're gonna be forced to spend more money on recycling 
uh, than our millage will, will allow. That means that something else, we're gonna have to give up something else. So they're tough decisions. It's not gonna, not gonna be solved overnight, but hopefully folks like the Ecology Center can continue to uh, kind of help communities, help cities like Westland and, and help us uh, make the right decisions, um, you know, not only for the environment, but also something that's sustainable for our, our residents. Well, we are, we are happy to help and eager to do so, and I'm glad that I don't have your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for being here. Keep up the great work, and uh, tell everybody at the Ecology Center West End said hello. Will do. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael, for sharing your experience here with us today. I also want to thank Canton Township Supervisor Pat Williams and City Council President Jim Godbout for giving us their take on the state of recycling at the local level. The recycling issues that we face here in Westland, they're not specific to just our city. This is more than a local problem, it's a global one. We need a permanent green solution and by working together, I'm confident that we will come up with one that works for us here in the city of Westland. With that, thank you for watching in the W and we'll see you in the next show.